So, you know, a question that comes to mind as one studies this is why is the universe so beautiful, so elegant, and so ordered, so symmetrical? And a follow-up question that occurs very soon after that one is why are we able to comprehend it at all? This is something that I think has puzzled or um, inspired physicists for a very long time. Uh, Eugene Wigner wrote a beautiful essay on this called The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences. And uh, of course, Albert Einstein, in his inimitable way, also commented on this. He said, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. And I think from, from a atheist point of view, these are just genuinely puzzles. For me, though, they speak to the possibility that uh, there is a creator who was a pretty darn good mathematician and was able to not only create this universe in this way, but also created people like us to populate it and to explore it. Now let me go on to another topic. There are many topics one could choose, of course, but let me pick another one, which, which is um, also interesting, I think. The question of fine tuning. So in this beautiful symmetric theory, there are some numbers. And these numbers have to have values. These, they're constants. <laughs> And um, we now know enough about this theory to ask questions like, what would happen if the constants were slightly different from what they actually are? And the answer is that very drastic things would happen. The world as we know it would not look anything like this. These fundamental constants have to be fine-tuned to allow life to exist. And there are many examples of this. Um, let, me, let me give you one example. This is this question of dark energy. So previously, if you were paying attention a few slides back, I told you that dark energy makes up 68% of the universe. Turns out that energy density, uh, well, that composition of the universe corresponds to an energy density of uh, milli electron volts to the fourth power. So this is uh, some unit of uh, particle physicists like, but it's a very small number and uh, all the fields, at the same time, all the fields contribute to it. Now here at Caltech, I can, I can assume this is well known, but you know, quantum mechanics, there's something called zero point energy because there's a jitter you can't get rid of. And so there's always some sort of minimal energy to particles, this one half h bar omega. In quantum field theory, this generalizes because we have fields and we decompose them into normal modes. And bottom line is we end up with something that sums over these zero point energies and we get something that's lambda to the fourth, where lambda is the energy scale where the theory breaks down. And we know that our theory, at least we think we know our theory, up to a certain level. So we expect this lambda to be some number like um, something called the Planck scale or the grand unification scale, the supersymmetry breaking scale, the weak scale. And if you plug those numbers in, you will find that just this very simple argument gives you the expectation that the dark energy isn't at this level, but is actually 10 to the 120 times bigger, or maybe 10 to the 108, 10 to the 60, 10 to the 60, but some giant number bigger than what it is, okay? And the only reason, apparently, that it ended up being here is that some giant number, one with 120 zeros after it, or 120 digits after it, canceled some other number with the same number of digits all the way up until I got to the last digit. Okay, that is the only way to make this theory consistent with observations. And so this is called fine tuning. You have to take this number, which naturally should have this enormous value, and somehow assume that these all cancel off to some extraordinary accuracy, and you're left with what's observed. Okay, now you can ask questions like, well, you know, what if it was slightly different? Um, and uh, the answer is, well, it can't be much different or else there would be no life, there would be no galaxies like that. Uh, you can say, well, you know, you said here, it must be fine-tuned to allow life to exist. What exactly is life anyway? And so you can say, well, you know, maybe we're being too anthropomorphic in insisting on human life. But you can make this very weak argument. You can say, let's assume we need a universe that lasts more than one second before it blips in and out of existence. Even that will lead to an enormous fine-tuning problem. And there are many, many other fine-tunings in our understanding of particle physics these days. 
and cosmology. And these are not sort of side issues. These are central problems in particle physics. For example, at the LHC, where the Higgs boson was discovered, uh, we basically built that machine and spent you know, tens of billions of dollars to try to answer another hierarchy problem, which is, in fact, nowhere near as extreme as this one. So these are central to physics today, and these are um, things that are well recognized as indicating we don't understand something about the way the world works. Now, what are responses you could have to this sort of question? Well, the first one is that, well, it was just chance. This number, for example, this dark energy had to be some number. That's the number it was, and that led to life. This would be sort of like arguing that, you know, if you go to Las Vegas for spring break, maybe you just had spring break, but if you go to Las Vegas and you're at the card table and you get dealt, you know, 100 straight hands of four aces, and then they come over and they put you in handcuffs and they cart you off, and you say, no, look, I had to be dealt something. I just happened to get four aces 100 times in a row. Okay, that's the kind of argument that that is. No one thinks of that as an explanation. The second possibility is something called the multiverse, which is that uh, the universe, which you think is pretty much everything, is actually not everything. There are many different universes. And the idea is that there are so many different universes that all these values can take various random values. Um, but there are so many that in one of them, there's bound to be uh, a value, which is the one we observe. And uh, therefore, it's no surprise that we happen to find ourselves in the one that can support life because, after all, um, we uh, have to be in that universe to observe it, right? Something called the anthropic principle. That uh, theory has, I would say, a lot of uh, work to be done on it. First of all, it's not at all clear that it's science. It's not at all clear that there's any observable consequence of these other universes. And uh, there are other serious flaws, or at least weaknesses of these theories. Typically, you end up with so many other universes, many of them can support life. And then you have to start asking a second question, which is, why is the universe that has life in it the one we observe? And in many cases, you find that the one we observe is completely uncharacteristic of the subset of universes that can support life. OK, so that's, anyway, that's another response. For me, um, the third and fourth responses are, are more compelling. The third one is that, well, there's a creator who built the universe and built it in a way, turned the knobs so that life uh, could exist. Right. And the fourth one is um, another one, which is actually the one that I would put my bets on, which is that there are beautiful and deep yet to be discovered laws of nature. And uh, these could explain away the fine tuning. So we observe fine tuning, but perhaps it's because we're still a bit ignorant. And um, this is something where there's a nice track record of it. Uh, for example, you could ask the question, I have an electron here, an electron here. They have almost exactly the same charge. Why doesn't somebody worry about that fine tuning problem? And the answer is, basically, Maxwell fixed that problem because he said, these electrons are part of a field and the electron field has one charge, and every manifestation of it in terms of electron particles um, has that charge. Okay, so we don't wonder about that fine-tuning problem anymore because we understand something deeper. So something like that could have happened. And, um, you know, that would be great. One thing that's clear, though, is that something like that has to be absolutely spectacularly deep, spectacularly beautiful. And for me, as you already saw, if it's at that level of beauty, that again sort of inspires me to think that there is a mind, a creator behind uh, the universe.